video is broadcast on Mark Levin Show channel. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to the channel. He's here. He's here. Now broadcasting from, from the underground command post. Deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, everybody. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. Well, the Backventures TV rest. They've kind of caught up where we are here, ladies and gentlemen. And we have a little problem. We have a little problem. I'm going to pose a question to you. Where exactly does President Trump stand on... DACA and the wall today. What is his position? Do you know what his position is? Oh, I, I, I hear all the bizarre arguments in defense of him going wobbly that uh, the media are trying to separate Trump from his base, that this is uh, really to get back at the Republicans. Uh, and I don't know. Just bizarre. But this is the president's decision. And then he has dinner with Chuck and Nancy last night and his new friends. And they come out and say, hey, we have a deal. And all hell breaks loose, including here. And the president says, no, 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 we don't have a deal. And then all day long, I'm hearing them going back and forth and back and forth. So I'd be curious to know, do you know what the president's position is? Now, we know what he campaigned on, right? Deportation. Now he says, you don't really want to deport all these people, do you? Well, if he didn't want to deport all these people, why did he make it a central plank of his campaign? To distinguish himself from the other candidates. I'm quite serious about this. doesn't make much sense, does it? We have headline after headline. It's almost incomprehensible. Here we have Politico. Trump, Democrats confirm outline of DACA deal despite denials. AP, Democrats say they have a deal with Trump on young immigrants. NBC News, Trump says no deal was reached with Democrats to extend DACA. Washington Times, Trump vows to work with Dems to legalize Dreamers, says the wall will come later. Right scoop, Trump refutes Nancy and Chuck, says there's no deal on DACA yet. Daily Caller, top Dems say Trump agreed to legalizing DACA recipients without wall. Right scoop. Trump just said, we're not looking at amnesty, we're looking at allowing people stay, to stay here. Well, my goodness. Everybody lying? On the right and the left and in between? Then we have the President, Trump, on the tarmac in Washington, D.C. today. Now you'll hear the plane noise in the background, so you may want to put up your volume. Cut one, go. The wall will come later. We're right now renovating large sections of wall. Massive sections, making it brand new. We're doing a lot of renovation. We're building four different samples of the wall to see which one we're going to choose. And the wall is going to be built. It'll be funded a little bit later. Well, we want to get massive border security. And I think that both Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, I think they agree with it. But... So we met last night with, as you know, Schumer, Pelosi, and a whole group. And I think we're fairly close, but we have to get massive border security. Is there anything? Oh, I think he's on board. Yeah, Mitch is on board. Paul Ryan's on board. We all feel, look, 92% of the people agree on DACA. But what we want is we want very, very powerful border security. I, I can't even follow all this. We're renovating, we're building samples of the wall, we want massive, massive border security, um, 92% of the uh, people agree, that is Republicans, Democrats, on DACA. Then the president is in Florida today. Hat tip, right scoop, cut to go. No, we're not looking at citizenship, we're not looking at amnesty, we're looking at allowing people to stay here. We're working with everybody, Republican, we're working with Democrat. I just spoke with Paul Ryan, he's on board, everybody's on board. 
uh, they want to do something. We're not talking about amnesty. We're talking about uh, we're talking about taking care of people, people that were brought here, people that have done a good job and were not brought here of their own volition. But very importantly, what we want, we have to have a wall. If the wall is going to be obstructed when we need the funds at a little bit later date, we'll be determining how much we need. Uh, then we're not doing anything. Right. You see, folks, I've been around a long time, unfortunately. I've heard this for 30 years. Republican presidents buckling to the Democrat demands, buckling to other Republican demands, and the border security never comes. I've heard it over and over and over again. This isn't a trick by the media. I, I know some radio hosts and TV hosts, they just don't, they just don't want to talk about Trump directly. I, but I, I am telling you now, if the president doesn't follow through with this promise in a significant way, then even his most ardent supporters, I think, will agree that he, was, uh, he wasn't telling the truth when he campaigned on this so vigorously. Cut three, go. So no, no relief for DACA recipients unless you get the wall? Is that what you're saying? The wall, at some point, they're going to have to. They cannot obstruct the wall. The wall, to me, is vital. If I don't get the wall, then we will become the... All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. You see what I mean? No relief for DACA recipients unless you get the wall, she asks. Is that what you're saying? At some point, they cannot obstruct the wall. Well, that's at some point. Remember, he was going to close down the government if he didn't get funding for the wall. And I told you then, there it is. There it goes, right there. You've got to link the two, at a minimum. And then we had the buffoons writing columns and so forth, the pea brains. Well, it's only three months. What are you, are you a purist or something? No. I believe in keeping your promises. Go ahead. Now, we have to have an understanding that whether it's in the budget or some other vehicle, in a fairly short period of time, the wall will be funded. Otherwise, we're not doing anything. I'm not even following this. Cut four, go. What do you say to Republicans who are looking at your outreach to Democrats and saying, what's going on here? Well, many Republicans really like it. As you know, I was with a great Republican representative just now who you know very well. through and through, but I'm also finding that sometimes to get things through, it's not working that way. And Let's stop there. I, I don't want them just to get things through, ladies and gentlemen. That's not the goal here, get things through. The goal here is to stop the radicals, the progressives, to start drawing down the size of government, to start giving us some of our individual liberty. But, you know, this is the thing that bothers me. Republicans don't talk about individual liberty anymore. The only people who talk about li individual liberty are constitutional conservatives and libertarians. Nobody else does. They don't talk about individualism. They don't talk about liberty. They talk about groupthink and group this and group that. I mean, I hear some pseudo-conservatives. They sound like Marx with the proletarian, the bourgeoisie. Oh, we got to tax the rich. Well, there you go. Go after the bourgeoisie. Go get them. Get them. Get them. It's ridiculous. Go ahead. Very poorly treated on the health care plan, and now you see what's happening for people are going single payer. Exactly what I said would happen, and single payer would be a terrible thing for our country. Well, that's exactly what we all said would happen, quite frankly. And the Republicans are a disgrace, an absolute disgrace. But it's not as if Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer were there to help us. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer will eventually be pushing hard for the Bernie Sanders socialist health care, where he says Medicare for everybody. guess it hasn't occurred to Bernie Sanders that in about 15 years, give or take, Medicare goes broke, and all you senior citizens won't have any health care if Bernie Sanders has his way. It's true. So I have a question for you, ladies and gentlemen. What is President Trump's position when it comes to DACA and it comes to the wall? What is his position? When it comes to people who are here illegally, of no volition of their own. And keep something in mind with DACA. It involves people who were brought here, children, 2007 and before. 
2007 and before. And so 2017 to 2007, that's a 10-year period. What's going to come next? You know what's going to come next. Demands that those children receive the same kind of treatment. And they will. And the president talks about a wall coming at some time in the future or will be the obstructionist or will do this or will do that. Mr. President, you said you would support a wall and you said you you favored deportation. This is not a good deal. This is not a good deal. I don't know what kind of art of the deal this is, but it's not. Uh, it must be abstract art of the deal because I'm not seeing it. I'll be right back. Mark Levin. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Kim Jong Fatboy shot another missile, uh, ICBM, ICBM type missile. Uh, I'll be talking about this later. The South Koreans are making the case for nukes again, a position I've taken now for some time. You have to recall, we had nuclear missiles in South Korea, they were removed during the presidency of Bush 41 to try and persuade North Korea not to build nukes. Well, North Korea has built nukes. And so the Levin plan is based on really what Reagan did with the Soviet Union to destroy the Soviet Union. And my plan would also uh, not only affect North Korea, but China. And I'm going to continue to press it because more and more people are kind of touching on it. Tony Kordheiser, uh, who uh, who comments for, uh, I guess, CNN. Now some of the South Koreans themselves, aspects of it. So uh, I think it's very, very important. All right, question on the table. Do you know what Donald Trump's position is now when it comes to DACA and the wall and amnesty and all the rest of it? Are you concerned about it? Because this was one of his fundamental issues. This Repealing Obamacare, tax cuts. Tax cuts. Larry, Huntsville, Alabama, the great WVNN. Go. Hey, Mark, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Hey, uh, Thank you. I talked to you back in the primary, and you were a Ted Cruz supporter, and I said, hey, I, I want to give Trump a chance because maybe once we would have a guy who would lie to the Democrats to get their vote and then change his position. Well, here again, we've had a guy that appears to be backing down and he's lost my vote. I don't want him to get along with Democrats. I want but, Larry, what is his position? I can't even tell what the hell his position is. Well, his position, I think, is that I'm too dumb to understand what build a wall means. When you say <laughs> you're going to build a wall, it's real simple. You either build it or don't. He's backpedaling, and I'm sick and tired of backpedaling. Either stand firm, build the wall, stand for the things you say, deport these illegals. We're sick and tired of sending it, giving our jobs to them. I'm a construction worker. Hey, I'm done with you. If, if you can't do that, you know what? We said it was going to be Hillary Clinton, or, or, Bill, or I'm sorry, we said it was going to be Donald Trump or Civil War, but you know what? It can be Donald Trump and Civil War. We're sick and tired of this crap. Larry, let me, let me ask you this question. What about your Senate race down there? I mean, I, I've endorsed Roy Moore now. The president endorsed Luther Strange. Isn't that odd? Hey, it's out. Luther Strange is just as bad as Mo Brooks. Mo Brooks talks more conservative garbage than anybody I've ever talked I, I like Mo Brooks, but Mo Brooks is out. Mo Brooks, he, hey, he voted for John Boehner. Every time it comes down to crunch time, they back down and go the Democrat way. I'm beginning to think that, that they are Democrats. And I'll tell you something, Mark. You look at the Alabama. When, when you run as, as a Democrat in Alabama, you have no chance. So what's happening is the, the Republican primary has become where we, we're electing Democrats as Republicans. And, yeah. and Luther Strange is exactly that guy. And so basically, the, once the Republican primary is over, there's your candidate. I mean, that's who you got. Although they say the Democrats are only six points behind either of these candidates now. Well, it won't happen. Well, I mean, I, I can't believe it. If we lose Alabama, we might as well hang it up. Well, I, hey, Larry, I want to thank you, buddy. Appreciate your call. Just want to keep rolling here. Rick Springfield, Missouri, the great KSGF. We're going to cover the entire United States from sea to shining sea. Go right ahead. 
Hello. First time uh, caller. Uh, yes, sir. Where does Donald caller. Trump uh, stand on amnesty, the wall, DACA, and so forth? Uh, well, from where I'm getting all over the place. Mm-hmm. Who did you vote for? Uh, I voted for Trump. Uh, he wasn't my for? first pick, though. Who was your first pick? I liked Rand Paul. Rand Paul, okay. Rand Paul is weak on immigration. You know that, right? Uh, yeah, but I was more going for taxes. Okay. Well, are you disappointed? You voted for Trump. Uh, a little bit here, yeah. What is his position? Do you know? I'm quite serious about this. <laughs> right now, I don't. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, you, you basically covered all of it. Uh, and besides, I listen to your show every day. Thank uh, you, Rick. I, I uh, work heating and air, so I uh, get to do a lot of drive time. Man, too bad you weren't here about two months ago. I had to replace an entire system. But, Rick, huh. I want to thank you, buddy. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you listening. All right. Now let's bounce back to the east. Natalie. Long Island, the great WABC, go. What is Trump's position? Tell us. Hi, Hi Mark. This is my first time calling anybody on the radio, so if I sound a little nervous, forgive me. Don't be nervous. Okay, as far as DACA, the first thing I want to see done with them is anybody that is serving this country in uniform who took the oath to defend this country, I want to see them to become citizens. Do you know how many of them there are? Well, I heard on television that they, well, I guess you have to find out from the Army. CBS, CBS actually did it. Pentagon says DACA recipients in military number fewer than 900. It doesn't matter. They, they, okay, they, fine, but listen to me. I have no problem with that. But it's 900 out of 800,000 or 750,000. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage. So that's not really what we're talking about. No, but I want to see them before they get killed. In I got it. it. I said it. Okay. Now let's move on. What about the other eight hundred thousand? Well, that there they have to go by anybody that's a criminal. I want them out of this country. We're not talking about criminals. The criminals theoretically are being deported, if not imprisoned. I don't know about the eight hundred. I got to look into that. And second of all, as far as Trump goes, I voted for him, and I'll vote for him again. Yeah, because you're not really focused. You're not really answering my question. So there you have it. I asked her. There's no answer. Not even following my question. Where? What is Trump's position now on this issue? We'll be right back. In the Washington Compost, there's a piece by Mickey Kaus, a sometimes columnist. And he writes, don't buy into all that rosy PR about DACA. Who wants to deport dreamers, right? Not many people, it turns out, even veteran immigration restrictionists seem willing to legalize this subset of immigrants in the country illegally if it is part of a package deal. That's true, even though a lot of what's said about the DACA recipients is PR-style hooey. For example, it's often said, and see, former President Barack Obama just recently said that the approximately 800,000 of them were, quote, brought to this country by their parents, unquote. Well, many were. But that's not required to qualify as a protected deferred action for childhood arrivals program recipient under the various plans, including Obama's. You just have to have entered the country illegally before the age of 16. You could have decided to sneak in against your parents' wishes. You're still a dreamer, right? Likewise, we're told DACA recipients are college-bound high school grads or military personnel. That's an exaggeration. All that's actually required is that the person enroll in a high school course or an alternative including online courses in English as a second language classes. Under Obama's now suspended program, you didn't even have to stay enrolled. The fact that you enrolled once is enough. By the way, I already told you, according to CBS and according to the Pentagon, under 900 people serving in the military are uh, dreamers. Compared with the general population, DACA recipients are not especially highly skilled. A recent survey for several pro-dreamer groups with participants recruited by those groups, found that while most DACA recipients are not in school, the vast majority work, but their median hourly wage is only $15.34, meaning many are competing with hard-pressed, lower-skilled Americans. The DACA recipients you read about have typically been carefully selected for their appeal, 
They're valedictorians. They're first responders. They're curing diseases. They root for the Yankees. They want to serve in the Army. If DACA recipients are the poster children for the much larger population of immigrants in the country illegally, these are the poster children for the poster children. Still, taking the DACA recipients as a whole, not just the dreamiest of them, they represent an appealing group of would-be citizens. So why not show compassion and legalize them? Because, as is often the case, the pursuit of pure compassion comes with harmful side effects. First, it would create perverse incentives. Could you imagine a stronger incentive for a legal immigrant than the idea that if you sneak into the country, your kids will get to be U.S. citizens? Sure, the protections don't currently apply to recent entrants. Under Obama's plan, you had to have come before 2007. But those dates can be changed. Obama himself tried to do it once. And the rationale for rewarding those who arrive when young, that they are here through no fault of their own, quote-unquote, and know only America, etc., can apply on into the future with no apparent stopping point. What about the poor kids who came in 2008 and 2018, as I just pointed out? There's a reason no country has a rule that if you sneak in as a minor, you're a citizen. You'd be inviting the world. Second, it would have knock-on effects. Under chain migration, rules established in 1965, new citizens can bring in their siblings and adult children who can bring in their siblings and in-laws until whole villages have moved to the United States. That means today's DACA recipients would quickly become millions of newcomers who may well be low-skilled and who would almost certainly include the parents who brought them, the ones who, in theory, are at fault. There are obvious, sensible ways to control these side effects. Pair any DACA recipient amnesty with a major upgrade to our system to prevent a new undocumented wave, such as a mandatory extension of E-Verify the system that lets employers check on the legal status of hires, curtail the right to bring in distant relatives. Senator Tom Cotton has proposed such a compromise. It would be easy to compromise on his compromise, say by cutting back on chain migration, only by the number of people that the new DREAM Act program adds to the citizenry. President Trump could declare a one-time act of mercy for those who came here during the pre-Trump era of laxity, but make clear the game was changed for future entrants. Why wouldn't Democrats jump at such a deal? For years, they've been touting comprehensive immigration reform and so forth and so on. Well, let me suggest to Mr. Kaus, Reagan did essentially the same thing. But they never would secure the border. And this is why we're watching Trump. We'll get the wall eventually. Some deal has to include the wall, even if it's in the future. And no. That's why he blew his first opportunity with that continuing resolution. That's when you tie the wall to the debt ceiling, and you tie other priorities to the debt ceiling, including reducing the debt. But his uh, pom-pom boys and girls and his rockettes were all around dancing and spewing and, and uh, burping up all kinds of bromides, attacking conservatives as being short-sighted and so forth. We're not short-sighted. We're actually quite long-sighted. And there's another great piece in Conservative Review by Daniel Horowitz. He said, last year President Trump promised that the days of people coming here illegal to get citizenship are over. When all those days are only beginning and will continue in perpetuity. Trump is in the process of building an open border. And the American citizen, that's right. Uh, let's see here. And the American citizen, oh, that's cut off. After selling us out, he writes, not just last night with his Pelosi meeting, but for the past two weeks of messaging on immigration. Trump is now trying to repair his status with the base on Twitter. After all, Twitter has become his go-to form to hide his true policy outcomes and keep the base happy with political morphine. Yet his defensive statements are even more offensive to conservatives than the original reports. There are no words to describe how offensive these pathetic straw men talking points have been to conservatives for over a decade. We've been fighting this false narrative for years. And Trump was elected precisely because people were tired of Jeb Bush acolytes suggesting illegal aliens on net are better than Americans and not a fiscal culture and security drain on America. Within just a few months, Trump has not only adopted the policies of the left, he's mastered their parlance, focus, false dichotomies, perverted sense of priorities, and strawman arguments with a downright eerie degree of precision. Then the president reportedly said the following when asked about amnesty. We're not looking at citizenship. We're not looking at amnesty. We're looking at allowing people to stay here. What? So Trump is now glorifying and idealizing DACA, a term that should be a four-letter word. 
the embodiment of America last unconstitutional governance as a legitimate baseline from which to craft policy. But there's even a bigger lie that will be propagated in the coming weeks. Proponents of amnesty employ a, 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 a stagic gem where they brought, let's see, where their broad messaging portends endless open borders and amnesty, a stratagem, but in order to get conservatives to support specific proposals, they try to isolate and minimize a small population. And, of course, they tell us this small population who should be allowed to stay and be given a path to citizenship are military veterans and, and superheroes. Trump will contend that this is only 800,000 people, but it's not what Democrats plan to pursue, you see, and that's not what will naturally flow from any amnesty. Consider this, writes Horowitz. According to the Migration Policy Institute, the 2017 Senate version of the so-called DREAM Act, Graham Durbin, would grant 1.5 million immediately eligible, immediate eligibility for green cards, another 1.8 million conditional status, which we all know would politically and legally turn into citizenship in short order. That's 3.3 million. Now remember, we didn't even get to the kids, the dreamers. The dreamers are largely in their 20s and 30s. Immediately after securing their amnesty, the left will come back and say, and I pointed this out the other day, how can you not give amnesty to all those who came after 2007 and are just children? That's approximately another million individuals, not including many of the recent and continuous arrivals from Central America. Then how can you deport the parents of U.S. citizens? Hence, DACA engenders DAPA, that is the adult version. According to the Migration Policy Institute, this includes roughly 3.6 million. And remember, since we refuse to negotiate changes to birthright citizenship for illegals, more and more of the illegal immigrant population will have children here and become recipients of the inevitable amnesty for the parents. They are also immediately eligible for welfare on behalf of that child. Robert Rector, the Heritage Foundation, estimated that this population alone would cost us $2 trillion, including dreamers, we are now at easily over 7 million people eligible for amnesty. Now consider the following electoral dynamic playing out over the next 10 years. Democrats are already on a positive trajectory thanks to years of amnesty and open borders. But the same thing, and I said this the other day, but the same thing that happened in California after the 1986 amnesty will now happen in many other states, including Texas, Arizona, and Florida. There are an estimated 260,000 so-called dreamers in Texas, as well as 559,000 eligible for DAPA, the adult version. That's a total of 820,000 new voters over time, even before discussing chain migration. That is greater than the 807,000 margin of victory for Trump in Texas last year. The margin of victory in Arizona and Florida was close to 100,000 in each state, easily overwhelmed by any iteration of amnesty and citizenship. But we've just got started. According to Jessica Vaughn's analysis of chain migration over at CIS, immigrants on average bring in 3.45 family members over their lifetime. Mexican nationalists, who will be the overwhelming recipients of amnesty, have the highest rate of chain migration, topping out at 6.38 additional migrants per person. At this point, we don't need to analyze states like Texas anymore. We'll be talking about turning Wyoming blue. Not only will the promise of amnesty cause a surge at the border, but many individuals will come on visas and overstay, which we've talked about. We have no visa tracking in place. This will create a permanent cycle of no enforcement. It will virtually be impossible to decipher all the new illegal immigrants from the plethora of those eligible for legal status, thereby in practice halting all deportations. Even under current law, which is ironclad, courts are blocking huge numbers of deportations, even of criminal aliens. Once we write a new amnesty statute, everyone will potentially be given the opportunity to present their case to why they are a dreamer too. Thus Trump can tout the limitations all he wants. But the lawfare and fraud behind litigating every last person into the criterion will grind enforcement to a halt. The bottom line with amnesty is that it never works. It never works and never will work. It always leads to nothing but more and more illegal immigration and more and more amnesty. It can never work until all the enforcement members are, in, are implemented years in advance. This is why I keep saying Having seen what happened during the Reagan years and beyond, 
Don't tell us the wall will be at some point, at some time, when you've now caved on DACA. It's the wall first. It's enforcement first. Ironically, none other than Marco Rubio presciently warned about this lax attitude toward enforcement when he was running for the Senate in 2009. Oh, yes, he was a Tea Party activist back then. If you grant amnesty, the message that you're sending is that if you come into this country and stay here long enough, we will let you stay. No one will ever come through the legal process if you do that. That's what he said way back then. Then again, the Make America Great Again man himself put it best during the Gang of Eight debate. Amnesty is suicide for Republicans. Not one of those 12 million who broke our laws will vote Republican. Obama is laughing at the GOP. Yeah, that was March 19, 2013. So as you can see, there are consequences that the president and his staff and the Republicans are not considering, but Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi are well aware of. This is how they're taking down red states. And this is how they will win future elections. I love everybody. Oh, I love everybody. What do you want to do, just start deporting people? I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know, I love my Casper mattress. There's so many reasons. But right at the top is being able to sleep cool, comfortably, and fully supported every night. And that's thanks to Casper's two high-tech foams. Another reason is Casper ships for free in a box so small you won't believe it even holds a mattress. Now, they do this so you can try it risk-free for 100 nights in your own home. If you don't love it, they'll come pick it up and refund you everything. From its breakthrough design and superior quality to its packaging and 100-night in-home trial, it's no wonder Casper was named one of Fast Company's 50 most innovative brands of 2017. You know what? Get rid of your heat-trapping mattress. Or do this. As I say, lean it against the wall, order your Casper, try the Casper. Because I know you won't send the Casper back. Now, you can, but I know you won't. So get rid of that heat-trapping mattress and get a Casper like I did. Try it for 100 nights with free shipping and returns. Here's what you do. Go to Casper.com, use code MARK, and you'll get $50 off the purchase of your mattress. They're already priced well. But that's Casper.com, code MARK, 50 bucks towards the purchase of your mattress. Casper.com, code MARK, terms and conditions apply. All right, let's take some calls. Now, you're going to see, I think, the difference. Well, let's just do it. Nikki, Monterey, California, the great KSFO. Go. Hi. Thank you, Mark, for taking my call. Um, I'll just say that I was a volunteer for two years uh, for the Trump campaign, and I've had the opportunity to speak with President Trump and talk to him about some things. And I just have to say, some of the pundits that are on the radio and the news are, I have to say, being so critical, and they're almost, Fake news in some of the ways that they're putting things out, but they're also turning people away from. Can you can you can you please tell me what the president's position is on DACA and the wall? Yeah, today I heard him speaking about Ra- rather than attacking everybody else, which seems to be the way this works now. It's just tell, tell, me, tell me tell me what his yeah. position is. Tell me what his well, position today, is. Today he spoke about the wall, and he said he absolutely is still on track for building the wall. They're working on several different parts. And, of course, you know, there's different terrains. So they are pre-working on some of the... But they haven't appropriated one penny to build the wall. I understand what he's, he's doing. He's going to get it built. He doesn't, he's going to get this built one way or the other. He well, why didn't, he, why didn't he shut down the government like he said he was going to do? Why did he duck on that one? Look, he's dealing with so many things in Washington. I'm asking you. He said it. I didn't say it. Why did he say, I'm going to shut down the government if they don't build the wall and then cut a deal with Schumer and Pelosi? He's just playing. He said it. I didn't say it. I know. It's the way he works things. It's the way he does things, okay? He's not going to get a result. He's going to have to maneuver around it. We're not getting any results on anything. Well, he's, it's the way he's done his whole life. But here's the thing. He's got to deal with this lunatic. Boy, oh, boy, you don't answer, do you? You're, you're just, it's what he's done his whole life. What does that have to do with anything? He campaigned against DACA. Now he's for it, isn't he? No, no. Oh, he's against it. Um, even Sarah Huckabee said that... I don't care what Sarah Huckabee said. She's paid to speak for him. I'm talking about what he says. 
Well, she she is a spokesperson for him. And she what did he say? It's not true. She has no idea where he's standing. She's in a difficult position. I believe I also heard him say that he is not approving this. He said that they spoke with Pelosi and with Schumer, and they're both agreeing on... Mr. The- Mr. Producer, I want you to play uh, cut one, please. Go. The wall will come later. We're right now renovating large sections of wall, massive sections, making it brand new. We're doing a lot of renovations. We're building four different samples of the wall to see which one we're going to choose. And the wall is going to be built. It'll be funded a little bit later. Stop. So the wall will be funded a little bit later. Who says? Has Schumer and Pelosi agreed to fund the wall? They said never. It doesn't matter who agrees to it now. He has to figure out what it's going to cost first. So they're going. All right. Thanks for your call. Really not. You're all over the map. Well, it has to figure out what it costs. Listen to Sarah Huckabee. Listen to this. Do that. You know, a president will never find his footing if people continually make excuses. Same with Reagan. When Reagan was moving in a wrong direction, people were critical of him in the conservative movement. They wanted to bring pressure to him to bring him back. Donald Trump's cutting deals with Schumer and Pelosi. He is uh, throwing away one of his campaign promises. It doesn't serve him or the success of his administration to pretend otherwise and to throw everything you can possibly think up against the wall in order to justify it. That's not a principled, serious, substantive argument. It's just not. I'll be right back. From the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, everybody. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. You know... If the president winds up doing the right thing on DACA, if he winds up doing the right thing on the wall, it'll be because people like you and me are pressing the case. It won't be because of the apologists who come on and say all the things that they say. Well, he wants to know the cost. Now, this is a man who's proposing a trillion-dollar infrastructure program. I don't think the cost is anything. And he didn't say that during the primaries. And we're owed an explanation. Why has he transitioned into Jeb Bush? We're owed an explanation. I think if you're intellectually honest, you understand there's a problem here. It's not not because we trust what Schumer and Pelosi says. We're not the ones negotiating with Schumer and Pelosi. He's the one negotiating with Schumer and Pelosi. And when we point that out, we're told, well, because of the rhinos in Congress. Well, what does that have to do with the rhinos in Congress? You lurch left because of the rhinos in Congress? No, you move right. And you speak to the American people and you put pressure on these rhinos. And you take control of your party and you lead your party. And then you clobber the other party. In other words, you want to revolutionize and enshrine your belief system and your agenda. No deal was made last night, the president says, but he sounds like a deal was made. Because they all sound quite similar in what they're saying today. But if I'm wrong, so be it. It would be nice to have a little bit of clarity, wouldn't it? He was very clear during the campaign, which is why so many of you supported him. Now, either you believe in upholding our immigration laws, either you believe we have a right to secure our borders, either you believed in his promise to build a wall, and I told you it would be very difficult, that the Mexicans were not going to build the wall, and moreover, that we have a filibuster rule and a problem in the Senate, and Schumer's not going to go along with it. He promised, really, a week or so before he cut another deal with Schumer and uh, Pelosi on spending over a three-month period. He threw the whole wall thing out the window, even though he said he was going to shut down the government to get the wall, would have been, which would have been very Reagan-esque. He really had two choices here. He can go the Reagan model or the Nixon model, and he's going the Nixon model. And some of us are trying to pull him back. Others are apologists. Others project, so they blame the media, they blame the other Republicans. Hell, 
I have no problem with blaming the meeting the other Republicans. But who in the end is responsible? What was the old thing Harry Truman said? The buck stops here. It stops in the Oval Office. Stops with the CEO. Stops with the president of the company. The boss is the boss. And yet I hear really schizophrenic arguments, including the ones I just told you that I've been hearing on radio and TV all day. Yes, 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 yes. Here's Chuck Schumer caught on a hot mic. You probably heard this earlier today on the floor of the Senate. Cut six. Go. He likes, he likes us. He likes me anyway. Well, let's stop. Oh, he likes us. Oh, he likes us. He likes me anyway. Nobody likes you, you snake. You creep. Although I'm not negotiating with you. The president is. Go ahead. He likes, he likes us. He likes me anyway. What we said is exactly all the Here's what I told you. I said, Mr. President, you're much better off if you can sometimes step right and sometimes step left. If you have to step just in one direction, you're boxed. You get that. But, but no, I'll talk about that, and it'll make us more productive, too. How do you like that? So sweet. So sweet. Yeah, one of the things the president said during the campaign, he attacked Marco Rubio, and he said if it was up to Marco Rubio, he would keep uh, Obama's DACA. <laughs> well, well. And then all the excuses. Well, the media and the rhinos and the, and the cost and the, you know, this guy's standing on one leg, the other guy's wearing a wig. I don't know what's going on. Whatever. Here's Schumer on the floor of the Senate. By the way, don't attack me for playing Schumer. He's not my new friend. He's uh, Trump's new friend, or re-friend, if you will. Cut seven. Go. Now, Mr. President, last night, Leader Pelosi and I had a constructive meeting with President Trump and several members of his cabinet. One of our most productive discussions was about the DACA program, in which we all agreed on a framework to pass DACA protections and additional border security measures excluding the wall. We agreed that the President would support enshrining the DACA protections into law. In fact, something he stated for a while needed to be done. And encouraged, and the President would also encourage the House and Senate to act. What remains to be negotiated are the details of border security with a mutual goal of finalizing all the details as soon as possible. While both sides agreed that the wall would not be any part of this agreement, the President made clear he intends to pursue it at a later time. And we made clear... Stop. That's what snakes do. They're Schumer and Pelosi. This is what the Democrat snakes do all the time. Give us what we want on DACA. Give us this. Give us that. We'll, get the, we'll deal with the wall later. We agreed. Deal with the wall later. Yes, yes, indeed. Well, they tried to take the House of Representatives to block his entire agenda, to issue subpoena after subpoena, and to impeach him. Folks, I know what I'm talking about here. I really do. Don't attack me. I'm just a messenger. I'm just telling you what I see, what I know is going on. The president's an outsider. You all say that. Okay, so he doesn't know these things, does he? Well, he's very sharp, Mark. He's very sharp. What I said yesterday, I stick by. The Republican in name only. Republican in name only. Well, that's Obama, That's a Trump. He's a Republican in name only. His supporters say, well, he, he never said he's a conservative. Then the president says the other day, I'm a conservative, but then they say, well, he is a conservative. Well, he is and he isn't. He isn't and he is. There's no stronger defender of this president when I think he's right. There's no stronger defender of this president, as you know, over the last many months, when he's under attack viciously and wrongly by the Democrats, when they attempt to take him out, when they attempt to take out his family members, when they, take, when they attempt a silent coup, which I've been saying now for years, when they attempt these things, there's no stronger defender of this man than I. And same with his conservative policies. And I'm pretty much quiet when he goes moderate. He's not going moderate here. He's lurching left. And it's going to take us to bring him back. And don't give me McConnell and Ryan, two detestable politicians. It has nothing to do with it. I'm tired of that fig leaf. So the rhinos block him and he goes to Schumer and Pelosi, two of the most despicable people, let alone politicians in the country? Don't give me that nonsense. That's a phony argument. Phony. 
Go on. We would continue to oppose it. The president he just said we're going to continue to oppose the wall. That's why you have to tie it to the debt ceiling. That's why you have to tie it to everything and anything you possibly can. Go ahead. And if you listen to the president's comments this morning, Director Mulvaney's comments this morning, it is clear that what Leader Pelosi and I put out last night was exactly accurate, confirmed again this morning by our statement, by the president's statement before. See, ladies up. and gentlemen, when you deal with snakes, this is what happens. When you deal with snakes, this is what happens. Go ahead. Doctor to go to Florida and Director Mulvaney's comments. We have reached an understanding on this issue. We have to work out details. All right, let's stop. And I believe they have. Because when they go back and forth, or Trump is going back and forth, he's pretty much holding on to DACA. He's pretty much saying codify DACA. Where he can't seem to square the circle is on the wall. And where he seems to be coming down on that is it'll be done in the future. I promise you, I insist, it'll be done in the future. Meanwhile, he's waving shiny objects in front of us like I'm improving existing parts of the wall. We're always improving existing parts of the wall. Or I have architects working on four different plans. Well, you know, everybody is an architect. If they're working on their house, doesn't mean you're building your house. Well, Mark, we need to know the system and the map. There's no appropriations to build the wall. Nothing's been passed. He's not going to build the wall until they get appropriations, let alone shake down the Mexican government. And I talked about this during the campaign. Wall's going to be higher. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be wider. Who knows better? I'm a builder. I'm a developer. And I, know. I said, you're going to have a problem in the Senate with the filibuster rule and, Sh and uh, Schumer. We're not going to go back and play it. There's no point in going back and playing it. But over and over and over again, I pointed it out. But wall or no wall, he has reversed course on DACA. He has reversed course on this. And uh, there's just no doubting that. Let's go to cut eight. Go. Now, we're for sensible border security, as I mentioned. And there are a lot more ways, effective ways of securing the border than a wall. A wall can be scaled over. Now, by, by the way, I'm not hung up on whether it's a wall or something else. There ought to be a wall where there can be a wall. We all got that, and we talked about that during the primary season. You can't build a wall in the middle of a river. We all figured that out. But there are areas where you can build a wall, a double wall with barbed wire on the top. And you build it, and you dig it deeply into the ground so they can't build tunnels around. We all know, and there's all kinds of technology and all the rest of it. But where walls can be built, walls must be built, because they are effective. Go ahead. I'm sure those who love the wall, I'm sure they've heard of ladders. A wall can be tunneled under. I'm sure those who support the wall have heard of shovels. It's a medieval See, this, solution. This is the jackass. This is Chuck. Chuck, uh, President's re-friend, used to be an old friend, then he got rid of him, now he's a new friend again, so he's a re-friend. And of course, Nancy, and there's a big piece in the uh, left-wing Politico how, uh, how Trump has succeeded in breathing life back into her leadership and into her career by uh, touting her and negotiating with her and so forth. And my great fear is now, uh, some of these Democrats who would lose may now win. They may not win. Now, Mr. Producer, where is that New York Slimes guy? That is, uh, let's see, that's the last one I gave you. You got it? On the uh, MSLSD, ladies and gentlemen, there was a New York Times reporter, Jeremy Peters. He was on MSLSD. And I want you to listen very carefully to what he says. And tell me where you've heard this before. Hat tip, daily caller. Go right ahead. Is the president trustworthy in these negotiations? No. And, and quite frankly, neither is Nancy Pelosi because uh, the... the the president's new best friend, the minority leader in the House, is going to impeach him if she gets the House back. I mean, Fair. that is going to happen. Fair point. And, and, and Trump should realize that. And he thinks that right now that he's cutting a deal to really what I, I think his ultimate impulses here, his ultimate motives, are, are to undermine Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, and remind him that he's fully capable of cutting these deals on his own. But 
You know, the, the, the establishment Republicans are not your friends, Donald Trump. The Democrats are really not your friends. And I think that's what has a lot of conservatives very uneasy right now. It's not that there could be some sort of path to legitimacy or legalization for 800,000 undocumented immigrants. It's that the Republican president of the United States, a Republican at least in name, is cutting deals with people who are supposed to be Republicans' mortal sworn enemies. 90%, right? Sounds like he listens to the show. He's cutting deals with people who seek to destroy him. These are snakes. These are leftists. These are ideologues. These are radical progressives. I've been saying to you, and I'll continue to say it so the backpenchers can pretend that they once said it, which is, they take the House, they're going to move to impeach the President. That's the whole point of the special counsel investigation. We've talked about this many, many times before. He's sitting across having dinner with somebody, Nancy Pelosi, who wants to scratch his eyes out. They will take everything they can from this man. DACA, 90% of it. Block the wall down the road, as they do with all Republicans and conservatives. But they are out to destroy him. And he doesn't get it. I get it. And it will be very helpful if more of his ardent supporters over all these years would speak up rather than giving aid and comfort to, in the end, what could be his downfall. By empowering Schumer, by empowering Nancy Pelosi, he is giving strength and power to the people who will flat out ruin him. Rather than taking on the tough task of replacing McConnell, replacing Ryan, duking it out within the party, taking over your own party as the head of the party. He's making nice with people who seek to destroy him, to destroy his family. And it amazes me how people forget this. How they make excuses. It amazes me. The strongest Trump supporter should be agreeing with me should be agreeing with me. Well, I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Go to John, Phoenix, Arizona, KKNT, retired military, now in the police department. How are you, John? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? All right, thank you. And thank you for your service. Great. I appreciate it. You know, I did three combat tours in Iraq, and one of the things I learned as we were going door-to-door looking for al-Qaeda as well as al-Qaeda sympathizers and those who were uh, harboring uh, things like contraband and people now that when I pull over, I go to calls and such, there's a reason why we ask them questions all the time. It's because we want to know what they know, and if they're humming and hawing and hemming and hoeing and, and can't keep a coherent thought and sound like they're making things up as they go, kind of like what the president was doing today, it's very obvious this president knows exactly what he's doing. He's just trying to find a way to explain it to the American people that it makes sense to him without him getting caught and that he's backing down on what it is. He knows what he's going to do, and that was a prime example of it today. He couldn't keep one coherent thought in his head, and that was the biggest thing that I learned in, in the streets of Iraq as well as on the streets of you know where I patrol now today, if he knew what he was doing and he had a coherent plan of what was going on, he would say something of what he was going to do. He's not doing that. He's backing down towards things, and it just infuriates me. That's why I was a crew supporter. You knew where crew stood, and he would he went to, and he was the only one out of all those people who actually stood up to his own party and did what he said he was going to do. I knew that's exactly what was going to happen. Instead of Trump saying hey, this is what we're going to do, I'm not bending until I get the funding I want. I'm not bending on my campaign promises. The, that's not that's not what he's doing. And today was a prime example of that when he couldn't put a coherent thought together to explain what he was going to do to the American people. It is interesting when Cruz took on his own party. He didn't get a lot of points for that for, with some of the people out there voting, did he? Absolutely not. And that's what made me say, this is my man. This guy stood up to his own party, and he's the only one standing on that stage who would do it. And that's the reason why I was behind him, behind him 100%. Mm-hmm. And it just makes me sick to watch this happen because I knew this is exactly what was going to happen. Now, did you vote for Did you vote for uh, Trump in the general election? I voted against Hillary Clinton. Yes, I did vote for Trump, but it was not mm-hmm. for Trump. It was against Hillary. Clinton. All right, let me let me let me ask you this because we're running out of time. Um, I've contended that if this sort of thing keeps up, he's not, he may not have a problem with the Trump base, but he's going to have a problem with the conservative base, which is not only larger, uh, but is 
more influential overall. Absolutely. He's, I, well, I see the conservatives being like, you know what? It's your deal. Have fun and backing away from it and watch as the, the Republicans lose the House, lose the Senate, and eventually lose the presidency because they're done with him. And they're just going to be like, you know what? Have fun. You know, I mean, they're just not going to turn out. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, because now we'll get to the Republicans in Congress because they failed to repeal Obamacare. Now we have a national debate on socialist health care. And that falls in the lap of Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan, but especially Mitch McConnell. John McCain, Susan Collins, who was the other one? The third one. Was it Murkowski? Probably. Murkowski, the three, uh, the three stooges, if you will, when it comes to this. Absolutely appalling. So now the national debate is on Socialist health care, led by Bernie Sanders, who is a Marxist. The Genesel giveaway continues, ladies and gentlemen, and the folks at Chamonix need to empty their warehouses, so order now, and you'll get double your Genesel order for free. Genesel is a natural plant stem cell treatment with advanced peptides for the pesky bags and puffiness under the eyes. And with Genesel's immediate effects, you'll see amazing results in about 12 hours. Call now. And get your double, and that's it, double your order of Genesel for free. Genesel is backed by the best customer service in the business. And listen to this, an ironclad 60-day money-back guarantee. Wow. I have family members and friends who use Genesel, and they absolutely love it. But we're not finished. If you call now, you'll get a two-month supply of the legendary Deep Firming Serum, also free. Call in the next 20 minutes. Clock's ticking. And get a free two-month supply of Esotique RF, Chamonix's most popular wrinkle treatment free. And uh, that's your fourth free gift. And let me tell you something. My buddy Teddy, he's on the phone right now. I, uh, trust me on this. Call 800-SKIN-604, 800-SKIN-604. Double up on Genesil. Get the deep firming serum and Esotique all free while supplies last. Limited time offer. Order now and shipping's free too. 800 skin 604, 800 skin 604. That's 800 skin 604. Government run socialist health care. Well, what could go wrong with that? Right? You like the DMV? You'll love it. You'll love it. You love the VA? Oh, you'll love it. You love Obamacare? Oh, it's going to be great. You like the IRS? Terrific. Absolutely terrific. And so the government will have absolute control over your life, over your death over the quality of your life, over the quality of health care. They tell us to look at all these other industrialized countries. We're the only one that doesn't have government-run health care. They call it single-payer just to make it you know, sound good, or Medicare for everybody to make it sound good. Medicare is dead in 15 years, give or take, and they want to expand it now to include everybody. So you senior citizens keep that in mind, because that will destroy it for good. For good. But Bernie Sanders knew this because back in 1987, by my calculation, 30 years ago, he said that single payer under a Medicaid type program would bankrupt the nation. Hat tip, Washington free beacon, cut 11, go. The point that we understand that I think was, was reinforced when we, when we went to, uh, to Canada is that, at least as I see it, and I'm not an expert on it, but this is the way I see it. Number one, you want to guarantee that all people have access to health care as you do in Canada. But I think what we understand is that unless we change the funding system and the control mechanisms in this country to do that, for example, if we expanded Medicaid, everybody, right, give everybody a Medicaid card, we would be spending such an astronomical sum of money that, you know, we would bankrupt the nation. So what in, it, 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 maybe you want to talk a little bit about that and why in Canada, under their national health system, you can have access for all people, and yet, per capita, it is less expensive than in the United States. And as we've discussed now for some time, the Canadian health care system stinks. It's lousy, which is why tens of thousands of people every year leave Canada and come here for health care. And I don't know of anybody who leaves the United States to go to Canada for health care. Do you? Including Bernie Sanders. Does he go to Canada for health care? No, I don't think so. Probably the Mayo Clinic or the Cleveland Clinic or what have you. Now, he's not the only fraud. I mean, he's not the only one. Here's Chuck Schumer, 
October 2009. By my calculation, that's a mere eight years ago. Medicare for all. That can't work. Cut 12, go. There are some on the left who say Medicare for all. Let's just have a government program. Right. If it were Medicare for all, the private insurance industry would uh, be out of business. The public would be happier. But the cost, because Medicare costs are going up so much, would be so huge, we'd be broke. Okay, so we can't do that. So, Bernie Sanders 30 years ago, we'd go bankrupt. Chuck Schumer, eight years ago, we'd go bankrupt. Today, oh, it's a great idea. Let's do it. These buffoons, these clowns are going to destroy this country. They're going to destroy your health care. And you're going to be desperate to get a doctor, desperate for a procedure, desperate for anything you need. That's what they're about to create if they get their way. And the clowns in Congress, the Republicans, couldn't repeal Obamacare so we can introduce some, some market processes into this system. And by the way, it wasn't the conservatives. It was the leftists within the Republican Party who claimed to be moderates. They're the ones who voted time and again to repeal Obamacare. They're the ones who voted to repeal Obamacare about a year and a half, two years ago, sent it to Obama's desk, and he vetoed it. And they whined and complained about it. They ran on it. And then when they had a chance to actually send it to a Republican president, they voted the other way. And these are the people you need to seek out and politically defeat. You need to seek them out, find out if they're your congressman or congresswoman or your senator, and defeat them because they're the worst kind of despicable politician, a complete and utter unprincipled chameleon. And they're the ones, and I told you this before, who are going to broom in uh, uh, this socialist health care for all time. And once it's in place, you'll never get rid of it. Now here's Bernie Sanders on his podcast today. Oh yeah, Bernie has a podcast, and he invites a Canadian doctor to promote single payer. Here's what she has to say. Cut 13, go. But if I have a patient who's got migraines and I need advice about how to manage it, they might wait several months to see um, a neurologist for a non-urgent problem like that or non-urgent surgeries, the classic example being a hip or a knee replacement. So how long will it take me? In the uh, you know, it's, it depends on where you are in the country. Sometimes it's a few months, sometimes it's a year. Uh, in some places, at some times, it's been even longer than that, that people wait for a hip or a knee replacement. And, uh, and I think that's totally unacceptable. What do you think, Bernie? I keep talking about the uh, I keep talking about the Canadian system. The Canadian system. The Canadian system is all out rationing now. All out rationing. And what does that mean? Long waiting periods and the denial of care for individuals. And when you deny people care in a timely fashion, they get sick and they die, to quote the late great Al Gore. And that's what's going on. And that's why people come here from Canada and why people here don't go to Canada. But Bernie Sanders doesn't know anything from anything. He's simply an ideologue. He's never worked in the private sector. And when his lovely wife actually worked uh, for a college, that college doesn't exist anymore. And she's under investigation by the FBI for a, a possible fraud. But Bernie Sanders, of course, won't be under the uh, investigation of the FBI for being the fraud that he is because there's no crime in being a political fraud and in being a Marxist. Now there's a senator from Hawaii, Mazzy Hirono. Or is it Mazzy Hirono? Who knows? Who cares? Anyway, her name is Hirono. H-I-R-O-N-O. She's a Democrat. She's got a great idea. Let's listen to this one. Cut 14, go. And for all of our families, for every American citizen, and I, I should mention uh, immigrants, people who are in this country, 11 million undocumented people, 800,000 DACA participants who are about to be deported in the next six months, all the people in this country should have health care as a right, not a privilege. Now, you can tell what a poisonous liar she is. 11 million undocumented people, 800,000 DACA, who are about to be deported. She is the lowest of the political life forms for making an outrageous statement like that, just disgusting statement like that. But, she thinks that people who are here, even those who are here illegally, should have health care. This person is a United States senator. She's not in a padded room. She's a United States senator. She's an embarrassment. She's an embarrassment to her own family and to her own party. Disgrace. Nobody's rounding up all these people 
Certainly not Trump, because he said he won't. No past president has. None. Republican or Democrat. Or they wouldn't be here, would they? And on top of that, that illegal aliens, excuse me, undocumented people, uh, should all get uh, health care. By the way, how are they undocumented? If we know how many there are, if they're supposed to get health care and all kinds of welfare benefits, obviously they're documented. They're here illegally. They're documented, but they're here illegally. So what is this undocumented stuff? They're illegal, and they're aliens. And all of a sudden, this is a pejorative. Illegal alien. No, it is a statement of fact. They're here illegally, and they're alien. You can't be an illegal person. Nobody said they were. They're here illegally, and they're an alien. Illegal alien. Follow the bouncing ball. It's not hard. Two words. Illegal alien. No, no, no. Undocumented people. But they're documented. We know who they are. We know how many. No, no, you don't understand. No, I don't understand. So now this is the push, the insanity of the progressives, the insanity of the Democrat Party left. And you can thank the three stooges of the Republican Party, Collins, Murkowski, and McCain, for what they did. On what wasn't even a repeal of Obamacare, it was a massive bureaucratic program just, you know, it had the Republican imprimatur on it, that's all. Hey, look, it's Republican, so it must be good. Hey, look, Donald Trump supports it, so it must be good. Hey, look, this guy, it must be good. Okay, great. But they couldn't even pass that because of the three stooges. And now we're talking about government-run health care from soup to nuts. Hey, because it's good in Canada, you know. And even though they said it would bankrupt the nation, all of a sudden it wouldn't bankrupt the nation. And while we're at it, we'll include undocumented people, a.k.a. illegal aliens. And that won't bank- bankrupt anything. And, of course, that will discourage people from coming into the country. This clown from Hawaii, good Lord, the hell's wrong with Hawaii anyway? I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. It is heavily populated with uh, morons and leftists. A few really good guys like Stephen A. Smith and a few others, but uh, not many. And uh, some, you know, conservatives who basically have to hide in the closet. And if they ever come out of the closet, they're whacked. I mean, they're fired. Meanwhile, you have a lot of left-wing kooks like this Jamel somebody or other who said the most hateful things about the president and his supporters. And she gets a little slap on the wrist. Okay, uh, that's okay, Jamel, if that is her name. I don't know what her name is, but something like that. That's okay. But, of course, they fired Schilling and they fired others. And uh, Jason Seahorn has said that, you know, when he was hired over there at ESPN, he was told to try and keep his politics to himself. It's Jamel Hill, apparently. So ESPN has become, and I say this sadly, Really, another left-wing cable outlet that pretends to do sports. That's what it is. It's another left-wing cable outlet that pretends to do sports. It's the MSNBC of sports. I mean, MSNBC is a left-wing outfit that pretends to do news. ESPN is a left-wing outfit that pretends to do sports. And so those of you who are disgusted, you have every right to blow them off. That is, you have every right not to watch them. There's plenty of sports channels on network TV, on satellite TV, and on cable TV. And if you're going to be disrespected, if if you're really hated so deeply, then uh, screw it. Screw it. It's like Kaepernick. Now we have all these millionaire spoiled athletes getting on their knees, doing this, doing that. Wow, aren't they something? All these new civil rights activists. We haven't done a damn thing for anybody. Not a damn thing for anybody. Selfish as hell. And in the big scheme of things, when you look at what goes on in the world, big deal. They're athletes. Ah, who gives a crap? When they cease to be entertaining, let me repeat this, when they cease to be entertaining, then they're uh, just... You know, running around with, I was going to say running around with balls, but that wouldn't sound right, would it, Mr. Producer? You get, 
<laughs> you get the drift. Okay. That's a little Hebrew there. Let us uh, take some callers, shall we? Jake, Durango, Colorado, Sirius Satellite, go. Hi, Levin. Uh, it's great to talk to you. I've been a big fan of yours since I was in high school. Uh, Thank you. 20 years old, worked on Trump's campaign. Uh, it was my first job out of high school when I was 19. Uh, right. And I'm really disappointed uh, to see Trump not following through with his supporters' promises, you know. I was really looking forward to having the wall built, uh, getting a lot of these immigration. Well, let's hope it will be built. It's going to be a lot tougher now with the way he has set this up. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed uh, that he has been working with Democrats. Uh, you know, a lot of us uh, conservatives voted. Can I just can I just put a foot on a? I don't have a problem with working with Democrats, but Pelosi and Schumer are worse than Democrats. They are radicals. They are they are out to sabotage his agenda. They are out to destroy his presidency and his family. And, of course, they continue to undermine this country, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I'd absolutely have to agree with you on that. I'm uh, really not liking uh, what they're doing here. How old are you, sir? I'm uh, 20. Well, you don't sign a day over 19, and that's good. You know what I mean? Uh, Yes, sir. All right, Jake. Thanks for your call. Much appreciated. Let's go to Fred, Fresno, California, on the Mark Levin app. Go, Fred. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Um, I'm Great, surrounded by eighty percent liberals here, so you got to know where I'm coming from. Well, I've been to Fresno many times, actually. Mexican Trump supporter, boarded for the first time. I'm forty-four years old. Wow. Um, I... You know what? I'm going to have to carry you over. You've been waiting a long time. The music means uh, heartbreak, top of the hour. So don't hang up, Fred. We'll be right back. underground command post deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building we've once again made contact with our leader mark levin hello everybody mark levin here our number 877-381-3811 877-381-3811 we're holding on to fred we'll get to him in a little bit well as our other callers, but I want to get into some other matters here. And that is North Korea. North Korea recently, I'd say within the last two hours, fired another missile over Japan. That was reported by South Korea. It's now been uh, confirmed by the United States. And as Fox News reports, North Korea fired an unidentified missile over Japan early Friday their time. The rogue nation's first missile launch since its massive nuclear test more than a week ago, a U.S. official confirmed to Fox. The missile was launched eastward from Sunan, which is the site of Pyongyang's uh, international airport, flying over North Japan before it landed in the Pacific Ocean, according to the U.S. Pacific Compa- uh, Command. An initial U.S. assessment of launch indicated it was an intermediate-range ballistic missile. South Korea's defense ministry said the country's military conducted a live-fire ballistic missile drill in response to North Korea's launch. Now, the Japanese government initially asked its residents to avoid anything that could possibly be missile debris. Uh, But uh, let's see, the NHK is now reporting a top government spokesperson said no debris fell from the ballistic missile. And it goes on. Now, apropos to this, I have a piece from the Washington Compost earlier this afternoon from Josh Rogan. The heated debate in South Korea over redeploying U.S. nuclear missiles on its territory has now reached Washington. A senior delegation of South Korean lawmakers is in town making the case to the Trump administration and Congress that such a move is needed to confront North Korea's growing nuclear capability and place more pressure on China. We are here to ask for redeployment. So they're saying redeployment of tactical nuclear warheads in South Korea. Lee Chi Wo, 
the uh, head of the Intelligence Committee of South Korea's National Assembly, told Mr. Rogan, the reporter, Thursday morning, Lee's heading a delegation of members of the Liberty Korea Party, the opposition to President Moon Jae-in's Democratic Party. He's also the chairman of the Assembly Special Committee for the Nuclear Crisis Response. Moon told CNN yesterday, that's the left-wing president, that he does not agree that tactical nuclear weapons should be reintroduced to South Korea or that Seoul should should, uh, develop its own nuclear weapons. He warned it could lead to a nuclear arms race in Northeast Asia. But Lee's delegation believes that as the North Korea nuclear crisis worsens, a push by the Trump administration or Congress could help persuade Moon's government to change its position, as it has already done regarding the deployment of the THAAD missile defense system. Now, a little bit more history on this. We've discussed this at length on Levin TV, but I want to discuss some of it again here. I went back, the New York Times, October 20, 1991. U.S. to pull A-bombs from South Korea. The United States plans to withdraw all nuclear bombs from South Korea, administration officials said today. Coming on top of cuts in nuclear missiles and artillery shells announced by President Bush last month, this is Bush 41, the new move would mean no nuclear weapons would remain in that country. So we removed our nuclear weapons from South Korea during the administration of Bush 41. Now, why did they do it? The article goes on. The officials said the step would be taken in part to persuade North Korea to permit international inspection of its nuclear plants, and in part because the American military believes the bombs are no longer necessary to defend South Korea. Now, look how wrong they are on all fronts here. The decision, which an official said was made in consultation with the South Korean government, was first reported by the Washington Compost. In accordance with the September 27 announcement by President Bush that he intended to slash the American nuclear arsenal around the world, all land and sea-based tactical nuclear weapons now in South Korea were already scheduled to be removed or destroyed. But the announcement did not include nuclear bombs that could be delivered by F-16 aircraft based on Kunsan Air Base. Those bombs are covered in the latest decision. So they're gone too. Many nuclear bombs will remain in Europe when the missiles there, based on land and at sea, are removed. In 1985, North Korea signed an international treaty to halt the spread of nuclear weapons, but the government there has refused to allow inspection of its sites by the International Atomic Energy Agency as long as nuclear weapons remained in South Korea. See how this works, folks? In an interview two weeks ago, North Korea's Foreign Minister Kim Jong-nam said inspections would be permitted. Quote, such a nuclear threat is removed, unquote. Mr. Kim and North Korea's Prime Minister, Yang Yang Yabadaba, have denied that their country is developing nuclear weapons, but American and South Korean officials have said North Korea could probably produce such weapons within four or five years. And so the weapons were removed. And now these sensible politicians in in South Korea want to bring them back, or something akin to them. And they are correct. And so, for the third time, I will repeat, I will repeat the Levin plan, which is this. Yes, nuclear weapons in South Korea, redeploy. That's number one. Number two, encourage the Japanese to do exactly the same thing. They wish to purchase them from us. They wish that we do it then we do it. That's number two. So we begin to encircle North Korea and China. Again, I'm just applying the Reagan principles for victory over the Soviet Union to the situation with China and North Korea. Number three, I would immediately move a carrier fleet into the South China Sea and keep it there. And announce to China and North Korea that now we have permanent islands in the South China Sea and there's not a damn force on the face of the earth that can move them. Number four, I would support movements within both of those countries that are hostile to the governments, exactly as they do in other countries. I'd support those movements financially, 
and if necessary, with arms. Number five, I would conduct, I won't call it economic warfare, but I would do to the Chinese economy. They, look, the North Koreans don't have an economy. They rely on China and uh, Russia for the most part. So uh, what I would do to the Chinese economy is what Reagan would do to the Chinese economy. It's what he did to the Soviet economy. He went right for their most important uh, product, their most important economic you know, strength, material, and that was their oil. In the case of China, it's their financial system which is a house of cards. And as I've been saying now for a long time, I go after their banks. They rely on our banks, they rely on us to prop up their financial system, including their banks. I've put the squeeze on them now. I'd stop warning them, I'd stop cajoling them, I'd stop feeding them chocolate cake. Let them eat cake, just not our cake. I would do these three things, these three areas, is what I would do. Now, you can continue with the you know, diplomacy and all the rest, but as you can see from 1991, none of this works. You're dealing with a Hitlerian regime. You're dealing with that in uh, North Korea, a man who murders his own people and doesn't even blink, who's sadistic in the way he kills people who are even uh, related to him. It's a fat little inbred slob. That's what he is. Then in China, President Xi has a chokehold on his government and he's tightening the noose around his government. Um, and uh, I've heard uh, Gordon Chang say on multiple occasions, a man who I respect a great deal on these issues, that Xi views himself as more Maoist than anything else. Well, great. So we've got to deal with that. And there is one other element. I would encourage the President of the United States to strongly increase defense spending and immediately and to force the issue on the Republican Congress. And he meets with his two great new friends, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. I'm sure he can control them into helping us raise defense spending, right? Sure he can. Sure he can. No, he won't. So he should take it to the American people and take it to the American people that the reason we need to do this is to protect ourselves from foreign governments that keep threatening nuclear war with us, including North Korea and down the road, Iran. North Korea keeps threatening to launch ICBMs with nuclear tips, nuclear warheads, into our country. Now, if that's not a big enough threat, I don't know what is. The same Democrat Party that tried to destroy all the strategic defense uh, technologies uh, before they could be developed. Oh, Yes. And whatever we have is no thanks to the Democrat Party or their presidents. But these are the things we need to do. Now, I have no problem with uh, instituting and installing more defensive systems. I've got no problem with that at all. But that's not going to fix anything. And then finally, a lot of that defense spending should be in R&D. And I've talked about these laser weapons, and they are serious, real weapons. They're not the great equalizer. They're the great destroyer. They're the great victory uh, technology, if you will. And so we need to continue to deploy. We've minimally deployed them. We need to deploy more and more laser weapons and do them in a way that where they'll, be, uh, they'll have maximum effectiveness. This is how you not only get China's attention, this is how China becomes a shaky, pretend superpower. Oh, and I should add another thing. Cyber warfare needs to be met with cyber warfare. The Chinese have been stealing our technology for decades without any retribution whatsoever. It's time to address that. Oh, Mark, how do we address it? How do we address it? Through cyber warfare. We don't need to call it that. But the areas from which, in the, indi in the individuals and in the organizations from which this cyber warfare is being launched, we launch back. We burn out their systems. We destroy their systems. I mean, if they're stealing our technology, then we are far more technolog technologically advanced than they are. So it's time, and we can win this battle without shooting a bullet, without shooting a missile, at least not at the... Uh, I don't even call them adversaries. These are enemies. These are enemies. 
And it needs to be done in order to keep the peace, as Reagan would say, strength through peace, as Reagan would say, make America great again. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know, our buddy Ben Shapiro, and he's a friend of mine, one of the great young conservatives out there, he is going to be speaking at Berkeley. And um, the threat of violence is unbelievable. Now, Ben is no uh, white supremacist. He's no anti-Semite. He's an Orthodox Jew. Nothing he's written suggests that he's a white supremacist. He's a traditional conservative, like most of you, like me. And he has to be defended against physical violence. Physical violence. Because he was invited to give a speech at a college university, in this case, Berkeley. Ben Shapiro is none of the alt-right, whatever that is. He's not a neo-Nazi, of course. He's not a Klansman, of course. He has no sympathies in that direction. He believes in individual liberty. He believes in the Constitution. He believes in capitalism. He believes in America being the most powerful superpower on the face of the earth. He believes in all these things. He's a man of faith. He's a man of family. He's very intelligent. He's very articulate. And so his only threat is that he's extraordinarily smart and his ideas are solid. So that's the threat, apparently. So, at least for now, the Berkeley police have brought in some of their armored vehicles. Uh, Looks to be like a significant police presence. I read somewhere that uh, $600,000 has been spent on protection. I also read somewhere that uh, students at Berkeley, or at least some have been told to shelter in place, And why? Because of the Antifa movement? Because of the Black Lives Matter movement? Well, if that's the case, then yes, these are domestic terrorist organizations. Not saying they should be prosecuted, because that's too complicated under the terrorist laws, but they can be prosecuted as your basic thugs, your basic criminals. But they're still domestic terrorist organizations. And For the left out there, you think this is funny? This can happen to anyone anywhere. Anyone anywhere. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a surprise guest on the Mark Levin Show. Come here. I don't know how the hell he can't get down here from upstairs, but it's Barney. What are you doing down here? uh, uh, Don't eat that. I don't even know what that is. Come over here, Barney. All right, sit down. I don't know how Barney got down here in the bunker. I don't know. I thought the bunker was secure, you know. But the reason why Barney is not allowed to run up and down the steps is because he has a bad back. But Barney and his daddy love each other, and he just can't be away from his daddy. All right, what am I doing here? Let's take a call, shall we? Come from North Korea to Antifa to uh, Barney. EK, what is it? Oh, back to Fred, line one. I apologize. Fresno, California. Sorry, Fred. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, like I, said, I, I apologize uh, to you. Go right ahead. No problem. I've been eligible to vote since I was 18. I just voted for the first time. I'm 44. I voted for Trump. Yes, sir. Uh, he's going to do the wall. He's just negotiating with these guys. I just want to. I just called to ask you what your source was this morning on your Twitter. You stated that he struck a deal with Pelosi and Schumer. So I read that this morning. So all day, uh, you stated it. You didn't say he may have nothing. So... You're misleading people. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm misleading the people. Now, he struck a deal because it, pal, I'm educating you. Didn't you ask me a question? Uh, He sounds exactly like Schumer and Pelosi when it comes to DACA. Can you please tell me, sir, the difference between his position and Schumer and Pelosi's position today? What's the difference? On the wall. Okay, put the wall aside. Try and follow me. What's the difference between their position on DACA? DACA's not amnesty. There's 12 million uh, people. That's Why don't you them. answer my question? What's the difference between his position on DACA now and their position? They're negotiating. All right. You proved my point. You proved my point. 
And what are they negotiating? I thought Trump's position was deportation. So what, what are they negotiating? You and I know he's not going to deport those people. Hal, listen to me. You're just a pom-pom guy dancing across the stage. Not only don't you answer my questions, you could have voted for Jeb Bush. Why didn't you vote for Jeb Bush? Why didn't you vote for Jeb Bush on uh, DACA? He was for amnesty for the 12 million people. This is just for the DACA team. Oh, okay. Not, that's a difference. But, 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 but Trump didn't campaign on this, did he? He do. Hello? Trump didn't yeah, campaign on this. All right, thanks for your call. There you go. If you find that persuasive, ladies and gentlemen, whatever he said, then good for you. I'll be right back. i got to take Barney upstairs. That's my uh, late past friend, I guess, the vice president, Mike Pence. Never hear from him anymore. You know, between your work grind and grueling schedule, it's easy to forget about the little things. But whether it's an out-of-the-blue gesture or just because surprise, it doesn't take a lot to make your friend or loved one's day brighter with 1-800-Flowers.com. Nothing tops the excitement of a 1-800-Flowers bouquet. And right now, when you order a dozen multicolored roses, they're only $29.99. 1-800-Flowers will give you another dozen, plus a vase, absolutely free. That's really a big deal. This beautiful bouquet of two dozen roses in a rainbow of colors will leave your loved ones stunned without spending a fortune. It's the best of both worlds. These gorgeous roses from 1-800-Flowers are picked at their peak, and they're shipped overnight to ensure freshness. When it comes to life's most important moments, only trust 1-800-Flowers. To order a dozen multicolored roses plus an extra bouquet and vase for just $29.99, here's what you do. But do it now. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com, click the radio icon, and enter code LEVIN. That's 1-800-Flowers.com, code L-E-V-I-N. I can't think of a cooler thing to do, an unexpected gift like that, or an unexpected what, show of love and affection like that. Let me put it that way. The... People who've called defending what Trump is doing with DACA and the wall sound, and I, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but sound just as disorganized in terms of their thought processes as the president does. Patrick, Denver, Colorado. Go right ahead, sir. Hello, sir. Well, I was going to say about DACA, essentially what Trump is doing is setting definition for illegal immigration. We have had nothing of that in Clinton and Bush. So he's setting definitions. 800,000 people, it's not that many people. It's 0.33 uh, percentage of the, of the country. Oh, okay. 800,000 people. Tell me, if 800,000 people committed other sorts of crimes, would you say it's not that many people? But that aside, it's not 800,000 people. There's an article I just read out of Conservative Review by Daniel Horowitz. You've heard of chain migration? Chain migration, no way. Um, but 800 of, of the... Okay. Of the Have you heard of chain migration? Now, now we get where you keep repeating yourself. Have you heard of chain migration? Yes, I have. What is chain migration? Chain migration is where your immediate family members can come in illegally, right. basically, right. and get uh, welfare. So we're not... Well, they can come in and get whatever. And so that's yes. that's not 800,000 then, is it? Yes, sir. Right? It's It's probably a lot more than that, but yeah. Okay, now let me ask you this question. This involves people who were brought here or people who came here on their own uh, who were 16 years old or younger in 2007 and before. Let me ask you a question. What about those kids who came here or were brought here between 2007 and 2017? Should they also get some form of amnesty? My opinion is, is they should not get amnesty. However, they should be kept on pretty much a ledger. They shouldn't get... All right, let me try it this way. Should they get the same treatment, the same DACA treatment that Trump and the Democrats want to give the others? I, I think so. I mean... Like okay, so then we're not talking about 800,000. We're talking about more, correct? Yes, sir. All right, so you would do more than Obama did. So you would take 2017 and back. Anybody who came here uh, as a child, either on their own or uh, with their parents... 
So you would go from 2007 to 2017, which DACA doesn't count, currently cover. Now let me ask you this. Uh, would you take this forward forever? Well, well I, I would have to look into it, and I understand you, you think it's like going around the issue. It has to do with like... No, I'm not going around any issue. This is called reality, pal. You see, you see, you have bought into the limited definition that's being provided here. Oh, we're only talking about 800,000 people. Actually, we're talking about multi-millions of people. We're talking about chain migration. We're talking about a system every cycle we go through this. Before Reagan, Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Obama, now it's Trump. Same damn thing happens on and on, and the border's open. Sure has. And that's why, and that's, I'm educating you. And that's why you don't throw the wall and the border out there. I'll get to it later. No, you get to it first. You get to it first. Because Schumer already said he's going to block it in the filibuster. This doesn't get easier. It gets harder. You don't give away your uh, your inside uh, straight and then say, you know what? I'll work on the royal uh, straight. Okay? No. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. We're talking about a lot more than an 800,000. We're also talking about the rule of law. Thank you for your call. E.K., Chicago, Illinois, the great WLS. Go. How you doing, Mark? I'm getting so frustrated with these Trump sycophants. I mean, the guy's done one thing good since he's been in office. Actually, two. He's limited some, some of the regulation, and he put in a good Supreme Court justice. Other than that, he's done nothing. By the way, I'm a 54-year-old African-American or black American. has been a Republican my whole life. Secondly, he what happened to tear up the Iran deal on day one? Did he do that? I don't think so. Repeal Obamacare, no. Wall, no. Tax reform, nothing. His major problem, Mark, is he has no conservative principles whatsoever. And that, and also his biggest problem as a leader is he wants to be liked instead of being respected and feared. And that's going to haunt him his whole presidency. Lastly, I'd like to say I could never trust anyone who would invite Hillary Clinton to his wedding or have funded liberal left-wing Democrats. He All is right, not but did you vote for him in the general? I have to. He's got to be better than Hillary. I was a okay. Up- now, now he's done some good things. You have to admit it, right? You just count three. That's it. He he has done better than what Hillary has done, but he hasn't done what he said he was going to do. And again, what's happening is his liberal history, his liberal leanings, his wanting to be liked. It's all starting to show now because the road got a little tougher. But so let me ask care- you something. Do- doesn't he realize that this this Democrat Party is just waiting for the moment to impeach him? Let me tell you. Let me tell you something, Mark. You won't say it because you're too classy. No, he doesn't realize it, and the reason he doesn't realize it is because he's not that bright. You won't. Oh, say really? It, you don't I'm think he's that bright? I think he's bright. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's not. Everybody, all his supporters think he's as Mar- as, as as Shapiro says all the time that this is all. You know, 4D, triple, triple, mega, mega, mega chess. No. By the way, he I don't even know what that means, 4D chess. What the hell it's, is it? It's a very sophisticated, it's just a, it's a metaphor for a super, super sophisticated game. Yeah. The guy's so wise. He, he doesn't have the quarter of the IQ of you. Okay? Oh, He's not bright. He's not well, bright. Well, I, I think he's sharp. I do. I don't. I don't. Because if he is, he would realize what you had just said, that these guys are waiting to cut his throat. And he doesn't. Mm-hmm. There's no other way to explain it. All right, my man. You take care of yourself. People are getting angry that the president's not pushing his agenda. And it uh, could be because my audience is uh, particularly conservative, but people are getting very angry about this. Tim, East Lance, I'm going all over the country. East Lansing, Michigan, Sirius Satellite, how are you, sir? Um, Mark, I'm doing excellent. I have to agree with a lot of what that last caller said, but I do think uh, President Trump is very smart. But I'm extremely, extremely frustrated uh, at his uh, DACA and his immigration stance. I mean, it sounds just like the Democrats, which is extremely disappointing. I miss candidate Trump. I miss the Trump who uh, inspired us, me, to vote for him. And... um, Mm -hmm. It's a real, it's a real letdown. It's a real bummer. I, I would expect this from one of the, you know, the Republicans who shared the stage with him. Almost all of them, I would expect this kind of political nonsense. But I thought he was going to go down there, go to Washington, and maybe naively, I expected him 
to shove through his agenda. I mean, endoscopy, colonoscopy shoved through his agenda. But he, here's one of the things that's, that's, that has not happened here, Tim. And maybe it's a failure of his advisors, too. You know, he brings in Rince Priebus, which was a terrible mistake. And he backs this Luther Strange in Alabama, who's an ally of McConnell. And he backed another, you know, moderate liberal against another conservative in some house race. It just doesn't come to mind. The, the, the problem is, 